And this is such a message that I think all women need to hear all the time is you do not have to deserve your rest. You know what I mean? Mm. Like we all think that we must deserve our, no, go lay down, go take a nap. You know, like we hammer ourselves into the ground by doing all these things, whether that is because it's what society expects of us, whether that is because we expect that of ourselves, whether that is because it is what our parents have expected of us. Like we have these learned you know, processes where we feel like I can't do all of this until no, Mm -hmm. like take that moment. You don't have to deserve your rest. Welcome back to the empowered woman, badass and unfiltered podcast. Do you ever find yourself saying, you know what, I'm going to wait until this is done or I can't do this because, um, and you really realize that you find yourself holding yourself back while sticky floors are the limiting belief beliefs that hold us back from breaking through glass ceilings. And I've got Erica Rooney here to talk all about crushing those limiting beliefs and living your life as you see fit. Um, She is the host of the podcast From Now to Next. She's a keynote speaker and she's a chief people officer. Um, All of her links are linked below definitely check her out she's on all the platforms like like I am it's crazy you know I guess we we just don't have like we we just have the time I guess we're We're doing all the things (laughs) all the things anyway it's such a pleasure to have you here awesome I'm so pumped to be here thank you Olivia absolutely so what made you like want to tackle limiting beliefs Oh man, we're going in big right from the jump. What made me want to tackle limiting beliefs? You know, what's interesting about that is I never thought I struggled with limiting beliefs. Mm. I never thought like I knew that, you know, I could get better here and do more there, but I never really connected with this idea of having limiting beliefs until I started out in like the executive world in my corporate America job. And that's when I found myself being like the youngest person in the room, right. Being the newest person to the company. And I just started having like these, Oh shit moments of like, I don't know what I'm doing. I found myself almost changing a little bit of who I was and how I normally responded. Right. So what got me there, I kind of started feeling certain ways about it, you know? And I just felt like, Oh my God, like I, I started feeling that imposter syndrome. And I know a lot of people are like, yeah, yeah. Imposter syndrome. But like, when you truly get in that seat and you sit down and you're looking around and nobody looks like you and nobody has the experiences like you and you really have this oh shit moment, you know? And I just kept waiting for that moment that I would really screw up. So I think that's when I kind of started diving into it. And I also like get so exhausted and I know this is going to come off as like cliche or whatever, but I get so exhausted by the patriarchy, right? And like being a woman in corporate America, being the person that everybody's like, oh, she's the party planner. She's HR. She's, you know, going to make people feel good. She's going to take the notes. She's going to be the one responsible for taking the pictures. Why am I taking the pictures? I'm an executive. So are you like, you have to take the damn pictures, you know? <laughs> and I got so exhausted by that, but Here's the thing. I'm not going to be able to solve for the patriarchy today. I'm not going to be able to fix sexism, racism, ageism, or any of that bullshit today. I'm not going to be able to fix it in my lifetime, right? Like it has been shown, it's going to take 200 years for women's equal pay to catch up to men's. Okay. I saw that TikTok of yours, that reel of yours. Yes. I'm going to be dead. Okay. Like, let's be real. (laughs) I'm going to be dead. But what I can solve for is what's in my control. And what's in my control are those limiting beliefs that were holding me back. Right. And when I finally started like doing that internal work and digging in and kind of confronting and really peeling back the layer of that onion to be like, why am I feeling this way? What can I do about it? That's when I started busting through the glass ceiling, literally became a C-level leader, launched my own business, launched my own podcast, started getting clients, speaking engagements. Like it just started coming. Right. But it was only because I peeled back that onion and I stopped limiting myself, you know, for lack of better words. So that's kind of, that's a long winded answer to like, what made me want to dig in. I, I want to touch on doing the internal work. Yeah. What did, what did that look like for you? Because I mean, for me, 
that's I call that looking in the dirty mirror looking at Mm -hmm. like what I what I don't want to even admit to myself but Mm -hmm. really really admitting to myself what does that look like for you girl we can talk ourselves out of a lot of shit let's just (laughs) real clear. We can, we are the best excuse makers for our own selves. Right. And at the end of the day, it only hurts our own self, you know? Um, and I think really getting to the bottom of it is truly looking in that dirty mirror, as you put it and laying it all out there. Like you have to be brave enough to look at the things that you know you struggle with, the things that you try to cover up, right? Mm -hmm. The things that you're like, well, I'll put that off another day. You have to actually stop and take a minute and look at that and address where you struggle. And that's the hardest thing to do because as humans, we tend to Mm self-preserve. We want to put our best face forward at all times, even to ourselves sometimes, right? But we all have that little voice inside of us that is like, okay, that's not what you should be doing, or you need to step up here, or you need to dial it back there. Right. So we all have that kind of moment where we know what it is that's kind of holding us back, I think, but we don't want to address it. Now, I know when we do actually get to that point where we're facing the stuff, we're, Mm -hmm. we're dealing with it, then like life happens and things get in the way. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's, I, I call it growing pains. There's a lot of growing pains that we go through whenever we are because for one, you know, our subconscious does wants to keep us safe. It, it doesn't want us to get out of our comfort zone. So, you know, becoming the new level of ourselves is getting out of our comfort zone anyway. Yeah. Um, what would you say helped you over overcome a lot of those like obstacles of the growing pains or helped your clients overcome the growing pains when they're letting go of these limiting beliefs when they're in it Mm -hmm. honestly one of the reasons that I started my podcast was to share in these stories right because talking about it really truly does help because it Mm -hmm. brings awareness to it right once you are aware of something you cannot unring that bell you cannot unknow that thought right you can't take it back you know because it's still there So just by talking about these things and by sharing with them and connecting with other women who are like you, who are experiencing those things, it brings this sense of comfort of like, I am not alone. And it is okay that I may struggle in these areas, Mm -hmm. you know? And for me, talking about them, talking with other people so that I could hear what they had to say back to me. And it made me feel not so alone, right? So like when we talked about this imposter syndrome that I felt as an executive, I went out and I found other young female executives who were feeling the same way. And I was going, okay, how did you survive? How did you get with this? Like, show me your path that you took because it's not the same for everybody. But when you know that someone else has walked it before, you feel a little bit more confident taking that next step. I love that, you know, and I I call that, you know, putting a name to the shame because we'll, we'll like feel, you know, shame. That's, and but actually naming it, talking about it, getting, getting through it, um, speaking through it. It's so important. Um, so yeah, thank you for, for saying that, because I think that's something that kind of gets yeah. glazed over. Like we, we may talk about it, but it's like, that's not a part of the process. <laughs> well, and Brene Brown, everybody knows her. She does a ton of work on shame, but one of her things about shame is that, you know, when you put it in a Petri dish in the dark, it's going to grow there. Mm -hmm. you know, and it is, and that's what happens, right? Like you may identify that thing about yourself and never speak it, but it's still there, you know, and it's taking over more and more. But the second that you douse that with empathy and connection, right? So bringing your tribe together, that's when that shame starts to dissipate, you know, because that shame makes you feel like I can't be here even more so, right? It is totally natural for me to walk into these executive meetings when I was very new to the team and be like, oh shit, I don't know what I'm doing because guess what? I'd never been in that role before. If I walked in with complete and utter confidence, there might be like a little narcissistic problem I should be addressing as my sticky floor, right? But instead that is a natural feeling, right? But talking with other women who can kind of add to that and say, these are normal things. This is how you should be feeling. Like this is what got you here. You were hired because you are this person. Like step into your power, step into your light. That is what then gives you that confidence to drive it forward. But if you just sit there and quiet and you're like, I'm not good enough. I shouldn't be here. Why am I here? 
that's only going to keep festering in your head. One of the things that has helped me when it comes, when I find myself in that position is, and I've been working on this so much because Mm -hmm. I am such, I'm so hard on myself. Mm -hmm. I, you know, and I think other high achieving women are the same way, you know, because it's like when you're not just doing the bare minimum, (laughs) When right. you're doing a lot of different things, you expect so much out of yourself. And mm-hmm. when those things change, it's hard to even accept. Um, but me adopting a learner's mindset mm. and just being like, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to go into this and learn. I'm going to screw up royally, but I'm yeah. going to learn. And it's okay for me to learn because I'm going to get better through the process. Um is that one of the shifts that you also had or did you have a different one that helped you as well? Oh my gosh. I had so many that helped me as well, but it kind of learner's mindset really kind of also connects with the sticky floor of perfectionism, right? And feeling that everything needs to be a certain way, right? So many people think perfectionism is like everything has to look perfect, be perfect. Perfectionism is different things for different people, right? And it can be a really positive thing in the fact of it can drive you to have a learner's mindset and to do more, but it can also be very maladaptive, which is detrimental to your health, right? And I use this example sometimes, but I never thought I was a perfectionist, but I like things a very certain way. Right. And I have a fitness, like health is a very big um, thing in my life. And I like to be really healthy. You can see in my background, I got all my gym equipment back there, but I used to have this mindset that if I didn't work out for 60 minutes a day, like it wasn't worth it. So I wasn't going to do it. Right. Like, and like, let's say I go through this moment right now where I'm really stressed out and I reach for my bag of M&Ms and I eat my M&Ms. Well, fuck the rest of the day. I just ruined it with this M&Ms. So we're going all in people, you know, the whole day. Right. But let me ask you this question, Olivia, if you get one flat tire, are you going to go out there and slash the other three? No, no, that's you have a lot more money if you do that, you know, and I would get so aggravated because my husband will come up to this home gym and he'll work out for 15 minutes. And I'm like, that's not doing anything. What are you doing? You know, but the truth of the matter is he can get in 15 minutes, three days out of the week when I don't get in any, because I don't have 60 minutes, you know? So it's this, perfectionism can really get there. So I had to actually stop and reframe my mindset in that type of learning mindset of like, I needed, I needed to unlearn some of the things that I had learned, you know, that like some is better than none. Sometimes rest is more important. Right. And so I had to kind of twist that learning mindset to be like, it, it doesn't have to be everything. You said something and it made me, it made me put down an all or nothing, like personality type. Like that's me. I'm so very much like I'm, and I try not to be, I really do. But it's like, you know, starting off my morning routine the right way and being, being this pregnant and like having all of these um, health issues It's just so just like, I'm not in control of like what I do. And I'm like, but I'm so used to being in control of how I react to things. And I'm like my own schedule, you know? And when I just get told, okay, well, no, you have to stay at the hospital types of types of things. Yeah. What are you going to do? You can't work a certain (laughs) amount of, you know, a day. It's a transition for me. And it's just like, I'm very, um, I'm a very like spiritual person. So I think God was telling me that I need to slow down, like, mm-hmm. and I need to rest. Mm-hmm. And I don't listen. I'm so stubborn. Like, and and I'm saying all of this because I feel like my stubbornness, and I know that maybe there's somebody else listening to this, that their stubbornness has kept them from getting where they need to go. Um, do you like, connect, are you one of those con- that connect with source or a higher power or anything like that, or your intuition or... I I have a lot of like, yes, intuition. Yes. And I believe that like the lessons that you need to learn will come to you. And I believe Mm -hmm. that if you don't learn them the first time, they come a little harder and a little harder and a little harder until you go and learn that lesson. You know what I mean? But like you talking about, you know, having to go to the, the hospital and rest. And this is such a message that I think all women need to hear all the time is you do not have to deserve your rest. 
You know what I mean? Mm. Like we all think that we must deserve our, no, go lay down, go take a nap. (laughs) You know, like we hammer ourselves into the ground by doing all these things, whether that is because it's what society expects of us, whether that is because we expect that of ourselves, whether that is because it is what our parents have expected of us. Like we have these learned, you know, processes where we feel like I can't do all of this until no, Mm -hmm. like take that moment you don't have to deserve your rest. So that's my message for you. (laughs) That's a good one. But it is, it's an important one. And that's one that I talk with a lot of the women that I coach with um, is you don't have to deserve rest, right? Like we can just be, we can just rest. And when we don't listen to our gut and to our intuition telling us those things, come on in, it's going to put you in the hospital of rest. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely insane how that works. Um, it, it just, it just is. And I'm just like, well, really pregnancy too. It's such an interesting thing because you, you will have, you have no control. You can't plan it out. You can't, you know, it's going to be what it's going to be. And I was, I I was reading this article. I don't know if you've seen the show working moms, but Oh my God. I've been to watch that on Netflix. Yeah. I, yep. I love that show. And I, I don't watch a lot of shows, but that that one right there, I love it. And they were talking, the the head star of that show did an article talking about how like it's just impossible to be a working mom. And I don't think that's necessarily the truth. No, I but think, I think she's <laughs> but she's more so like talking about like the work-life balance. Well, mm-hmm. I've never been a fan of work-life balance anyway. Like the idea that everything would be evened out because sometimes certain things take more priority than other things. Amen. And it's not like you can just have the no, nothing in life is consistent but no. change, you know? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. And I dropped an episode talking about how I do it all because I I get that question. You probably too. How do you do it all? Right. Because you're doing all the things. And I tell that's the trick is I don't do it all. Right. Like I went to two of my kids baseball games this season Two. I don't need to go to all of them. He doesn't need me to be at all of them. He needs me to be at the important ones. I went to one of his big games that he asked me to go to. And then I went to the trophy ceremony. You know, I don't need to be at everything. And quite honestly, I think that it makes me a better mother to show him that I take time for myself and that I am not just here just to serve my family. Mm -hmm. You know, that I am my own person. I am here to work. I serve the people I work with. I have my second job, which is my podcasting, my coaching, my consulting. I'm here to serve those people. Yes, I am here to serve my family, but I'm also here to serve myself, you know? And if you want me to show up as the best mom for you, it's not going to be sitting on a cold ass bleacher for an hour at seven thirty at night. It's going to be in my bathrobe on my couch resting. <laughs> I, um, I was what? trying to explain that to somebody. Like, I was like, I'm not going, I'm like, I have to be in a position where I have somebody that does the picking up and dropping off. Mm-hmm. Cause I, I'm not, I can't do the chauffeur thing. No. I, I just, it's quite just, annoying. That, right. Like, I'm like, I'm like, I want, I, I think about like just how much my mom drove us around uh-huh. like other people. And then you, you know, you do the carpools. I'm like, I have no interest. You know what somebody said to me once and it really spoke to me because I was really struggling with balancing everything that I do that fulfills me as a professional and as a mom, all the things that the working mom has to do. Right. And she said, it's not about the quantity. It's about the quality, right? So me picking my kid up from school every day, is that adding value to our relationship? And that's for me to decide, right? For some moms, it might be their favorite part of the day. They get to mm-hmm. pick them up, whatever. For me, it's not necessarily the favorite part, right? I don't see, it's a five minute drive, but it really takes 30 because I got to sit in the line and wait for the damn line to move. For me, it's about being home so he can come here and sit next to me after he gets dropped off so that we can do his homework together, you know, and it's reading books together at the end of the day. It's not doing all of the things. He doesn't need me to be the one to do all the things either, you know, and that's where I think a lot of women struggle is they feel like I need to do it and I'm the only one that can do it because I'm the mom and I know best right? Like we have to separate ourselves from that and allow our children to experience other people, other situations so that they can go out there in the world and grow up to be independent, successful people that don't just rely on mommy. How many 
many men we done seen 50 years old only relying on only their mom? Quite a few. <laughs> Quite a few. You know, you're laughing. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this this makes me think about just comparison, you know, because mm-hmm. I, I, I hear so as I'm becoming a mother, I hear so much about this mom shame and I've been watching it over the years with my friends, with parents and like that with children and stuff. And I, I think that a lot of that has to do with self induced um, shame that we, and comparison, we, we compare so much and this is, you know, not just for being a mom or anything, but more so with when it comes to your growth why do you think that we as a society can pair each ourselves so much to each other oh why do we compare ourselves because we have a desire to be liked we have a desire to fit in i want to i want you to like me so i need to be doing the things that you're doing if you're doing those things then i should be doing those things right mm-hmm. and then i only see the outside too of Mm -hmm. what you've got going on. So I then set this level of expectation in my head of all the things you're doing and how great it is, because that's what we assume, right? That's what I see on social media. So then we have this false narrative that you're doing it all and everything is perfect. So why isn't it like that for me? You know, and that's what gets us going back to shame. It's what gets us in this cycle of shame. It's these expectations that we create ourselves you know, for ourselves, for our friends that we think when we don't even have the full picture, you know, and that's why I love like these types of conversations because it really talks about it and it lets it out there. Right. We, and going back to being like this new mom and stuff is we create these expectations based off of what we see around us of how we should be, you know, I should breastfeed my kid for a whole year because that's the best thing to do. You know, I should put him or her in this daycare or I should stay home with him or her to be the best mom, or I should, it's going to depend, you know, on your, your circle and who you run with, but you look around you and you see all these other people doing all of these things. And from this need to be liked and this need to fit in, we feel this expectation to do what they're doing. So I got to look at that person and compare, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I get that. And I'm, I I think that social media has also added on another egoic layer Mm -hmm. to our, like, to who we believe we are, because we've got our online personalities. We've got the ones that we show, you know, our work colleagues and, you know, professionals. We've got the ones that are like in our home life, like who we are yeah, um, at a soul level. And then we've got, you know, the ego and then, but it's really this other identity this online identity that we have not everybody has it some people are very blessed to not have to deal with with that um but then it's like when you do get to looking and seeing what other people have going on and I mean I found myself just being like I I used to struggle with this a lot more than I do now um but I just, I'm like, you know, good for them. Like yeah. people are only showing their highlight reels, consistently reminding myself that. Mm-hmm. So I don't, you know, compare as much, but I still find like, cause it, just from the company that I keep, I'll find, I have one friend that she just loves to compare things. Like that's just how she is. Yeah. That's just, <laughs> and, um, but I think that that's how her brain works. And I just, that's just a level of acceptance. And I'm just like, that's, you know, that's for her, not yeah. for me. But, and you I, know, I, go, ahead. go ahead. I just think that it's a, a certain level of personal development that you have to do. Like certain, a certain level of reassuredness that you have to have in your life. Um, when you really want to step out and do things on your own you know not not caring about other people's opinions when you're doing these things because it's those friends opinions that are going to be like okay well why are you doing that why why is that a thing you know that come back against you that sometimes hold you back not saying that they don't want you to do better in life not saying that they're like crabs in a bucket mentality but they might you know they'll, they'll just be questioning you One thing that I really had to come to terms with is that 
not everybody is going to understand me. Right. And like you, I'm very much a high achiever. Like I'm always looking for that next thing. You know, as soon as I landed my executive job, I was like, okay, well, where can I go after this? What can I be doing? You know? And it's like, can I take a minute to Mm -hmm. celebrate in this, (laughs) right? Like this is a pretty good deal, but that's just who I am, right? Like whether it's reading or a podcast, like I am always trying to learn something new. That's just in my brain. I have people that surround me that are like, isn't this enough? Isn't this enough? And it's not that it's not enough. It is enough. Trust me. But it's that I just have this high achieving learning mentality and there is never an end game for me. There's never that touchdown goalpost moment because the goalpost is always moving, right? That doesn't mean I'm not happy where I am. I'm very happy of where I am, but it also doesn't mean that I can't want more, you know? And I think that that's hard for some people who maybe aren't quite as growth minded, you know, and again, the world takes all kinds of kinds, right? There are worker bees that want to come in, do their job, turn off the computer and go home and chill out. And that is wonderful. Sometimes I wish I could have that mentality, you know, but Mm -hmm. for people who are high achievers, we are always moving the goalpost and shifting and moving. And a lot of people don't understand that, you know, and as someone that like most people or like a lot of people, I have a desire to be liked and to fit in, right? So when people don't understand me or they they question, you know, why would she do that or what is she doing? My immediate reaction is to be defensive or to not share or to close up and, and cover up, right? And so what I constantly have to work on myself is reminding myself that I am not everybody's cup of tea, you know? And I, I'm not a buffet. I'm not here to serve everybody. Like <laughs> I am here to do what makes me happy, but that takes, I I know that takes constant work on my part. You know, like some people are like, okay, she's out there doing all the damn things. Yes, I am. But only because I am putting myself in a place that makes me uncomfortable. You know, that's why that's how, you know, it's not that it comes easy to me. I just move myself. Yeah. And, and it becomes addicting, you know, get constantly getting out of your comfort zone because it's just like, when it feels just normal, like comfortable, it's just like, oh, this is, this is, this is okay, but it's not enough. Look, I'm not a neuroscientist. I don't know what chemical in the brain it's going to fire off, but I'm sure that there is some chemical in the brain that gets released when you move yourself out of the comfort zone in a good way. You know, Mm -hmm. like you don't want to move yourself so far out that you're in the panic phase, (laughs) But when you do something that challenges yourself and you see that you're capable of that kind of growth, like that is a high, you know, like that is, that is a hit. And people that are high achievers, like are constantly chasing that. I think that, and I've been thinking this a lot lately, I'll, I'll find, I'll see people online and I just, I hear their excuses and I'm just like, you know, you're where you are because you believe you, you don't deserve more. Mm-hmm. You believe that it's not possible for you. Um, what do you say to the people that want more, but don't truly believe that it's possible for them? That's a hard one. And I have worked with people who have just been totally stuck, you know? And what I do with those people is I get them to commit to the next step. You know, because if you had asked me 15 years ago, if I would be a C-level leader owning my own business, I would have told you, hell no, there's no way in hell I could never get there because I never had that kind of support or guiding light in my life to tell me that I could do that, you know, but we're not trying to get to the end game. Right. And that, that Mm -hmm. also goes back to the social media thing is that we see in one picture, 20 years of the making right? Mm -hmm. Like it takes time. So I get them to commit to that next step and then the next step and then the next step. And once you start taking those steps and you start building upon it, you're like, I can do this. I can build that. I can post like that. I can go here. I can get those followers. And then people start believing in themselves, but you have to get them to trust enough to take that first step. I love that. Yeah. Just take the next step guys. If you're listening to this and you're just like, okay, I'm not, I'm not truly convinced. Just go ahead and take the next step. You'll, yeah. you'll and what's get... the worst that could happen? 
You mm-hmm. know, that's always my follow-up question, especially when somebody is really stuck. What is the worst that could happen if you do that next step? Is it something you can live with? You know, if your next step is applying for a job that's, you know, two levels above where you, the worst that could happen is you don't get the job, you know, like, what is it? Like, let's actually talk it through, you know, because 99% of the time it is not some catastrophic thing. And I heard the statistic and I actually did a, a post on this today, 85 to 95% of the things that we worry about don't happen. Yeah, really? Yes. So oh. I, I looked at the few different studies and cause at first she was just like 90%. So I looked it up, but it ranges, you know, because people, what they worry about ranges, but yeah, 85 to 95% based on who you are. It wow. Never happens. I love that because when you go back and you think about, and I'm doing this as we talk, I think about all of the things that I worried about, like in the last 24 hours, you know, I mean, I could, nothing bad happened to me, you know, like bad air quote, but all of those things that I worried about. And also too, you make it through hundred percent of your bad days, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's what I also like, Hey, if 85 to 95% of the things don't happen to me, right? Like if the 5% actually does happen to me, I have made it through those bad days and I've had some pretty bad days, you know? Yeah. So, but here I am. Yeah. I mean, goodness. Um, well, Erica, tell me more about your podcast before we get off here. Yes. So I am the host of the podcast from now to next. And I talk with women who are at the executive level who have worked through their sticky floors. So whether that is imperfect or imperfectionism, perfectionism, imposter syndrome, toxic relationships, toxic behaviors, right? Because sometimes it can be staying in the wrong relationship or keeping the wrong friendships about you that are keeping you stuck. But we talk about these sticky floors. We name them. We shed light on them. We let you know you're not alone. And then we talk through how do we get through those, right? Then I also have little stepping stone episodes, which are just fun, very short bite-sized pieces of information that I throw out there on all different topics like these sticky floors, but also how am I doing it all? You know, what does the practice of gratitude really do for you? How does that help you get seen, get heard, bring it to the next level, right? Because we are all about helping women get seen, get heard and get promoted, right? It's all about moving up that corporate ladder. It's all about getting to the C-suite. It's all about living your life to whatever you want it to be. If your C-suite air quote is living in an RV on the beach, teaching yoga, God bless you, you know, but like whatever that dream is of yours, like you can do it. It's just, let's get ourselves out of those sticky floors and bust through the glass ceilings. I love it. Okay, guys, you've heard it. Definitely check the links below to connect with her. Erica, it was such a pleasure having you here today. No, likewise, Olivia. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Empowered Woman Badass and Unfiltered Podcast. If you found any value in this, please consider sharing and subscribing. Now go out and be a badass.